It's time to talk about a very simple concept and complex at the same time because to use it is very simple but when you try to understand what is happening behind the scene that's where it gets complicated. So let's try to understand that in this topic of string. So in this video let's talk about what is string. Now basically we have worked with string before. Example whenever you try to create a variable we can have we have to specify the type of it right example we have worked with integer float double boolean in the same way if you want to store a character stream let's say if you have multiple characters something like this let's say uh, you want to store a name like Naveen now this Naveen is not a single character right it's a bunch of characters and when you want to store this together of course you can use a character array uh, we will talk about array later uh, but then we can create a character array here uh, which is a array of different uh, different characters or we can create a string here now how, how do we represent that in a string now one thing to remember whenever you talk about string in java you have to put that in double quotes the way you work with characters in characters you use single quote here we'll be using double quotes so if you want to store Naveen, so you have to first put that into double quotes and then where you will store this of course you have to you, you need a variable here right so what i will do is i will create a variable called name now this variable name needs a type now what type of this? This is of type string. Now one thing to observe, when you talk about primitive data types, we have int, float, double, character, uh, boolean and many more, right? Now all those actually starts with small letter, right? Uh, this string S starts with capital, which means that string in Java is not a primitive type, it's a class basically. If you go to string class, you will find string is actually a class. Okay. That actually makes some sense. But then when you say class, we have seen this, right? Whenever you work with classes and if you want to create object of it, we use a new keyword, right? We are not doing it here. So this does not look like a correct syntax. It works, but it's not something we are used to, right? Whenever you work with class, we normally create a new object. Okay, this works, but then why this will work, that we'll discuss later. At this point, if you want to go in a general sense, if you want, if you have a class, the way you can create a string is by, the way you can create object of string is by saying new string and you can give the round bracket. Now this is how you create a string variable or string object. Now basically this is a variable, right? Reference variable which is referring to a string object. Now what might be happening behind the scene? So it's, very, it's not that difficult. Uh, if you imagine this as your JVM, the big box, inside this of course you will be having your stack memory right now this is your stack and then of course in this uh, you will be creating a reference variable which is name and then it will have some address but this address or the object will be created inside heap memory imagine this is your heap memory you know we should make this a big one this time let's say a bigger heap memory so that i can write some multiple things there now the reason we are creating a heap memory in a, not a structured format is because there is no fixed size to it uh, it may expand depend upon your requirement so we got a heap here now when you talk about this line line number eight when you say new string of course it will create a new object for you you got an object here right and it will have let's say some address i will say the address here is uh, 105 so of course you will create a variable which is name here and then the address is 105 so there's a link here and of course in this particular box there's no data it's it's empty right okay uh, this empty makes sense actually but then if you try to print this let's try let's see what it prints if you try to print this data here i will compile this code and run you can see it's print it prints nothing basically it prints blank thing okay it's because it's blank now how will you provide data now in this case what you can do is in this new string in the constructor you can pass the string which you are you want to example if i want to store naveen that's the data i'm storing ignore this original this is given by the ide but this is our value which is naveen so inside the string constructor you are passing the data which is naveen right now if you try to print this you can see we got naveen here okay so that means in this thing uh, we are creating the data which is naveen that's what we are expecting as of now let's see if that works okay now there's also a concept of hash and equals right so what i will do here is i will try to print the hash code for this one so if you try to print the hash code and if you run this code you can say this is the hash code for this depend upon data depend upon some calculation now what else we can do here so example let's say if i want to concatenate this naveen with hello so let's say i want to print hello naveen what you can do is uh, of course you can write a different statement to print hello and then you can print name but then 
string by default does not work with any other operators like subtraction, division, but only there's one exception, which is plus operator. So you can use string with plus operator. Okay, so let's say I want to print hello and Navin both. So in this case, you can print hello, and then to concatenate, to mix these two, you will use a plus operator here. So you can simply say plus. And now with this, compile and run, you can see we got hello Navin. I hope that makes sense. So you can use plus to do to print this. What else we can do? Uh, we have certain methods here which we can use. Now since it's a class, of course it will have some methods, right? Uh, so there are some handy methods here. Example, you can check uh, what is a character of a particular location. So let's say I want to know what is a character at location two, I mean index number one. So if I pass index one here, it will give me a character at index one. So if you look at this Naveen, it is, is n is index zero, a in, is index one, then two, then three, then four. And if you try to compile and run this, you can see we got A. So yeah, this is how you can basically use certain methods there, which is character at, or you can also concatenate two strings. Okay, so let's say if you concatenate my name with, I will give a space and ready. So basically what I'm doing is, I'm concatenating Naveen with ready here. Let's see if that works. Yeah, it worked. Can you see that we got Naveen ready? So that's how we can basically use this. Now, since strings are so important for the programmers, what we got here is, uh, let me just remove, or let me just remove this line. Yeah, so string is so important for programmers. What we got in Java is, instead of writing this new string, you can actually, you know, directly write Naveen here, even that works. So behind this, it will create an object. You don't have to worry about it. So when you say string name equal to Naveen, it will create the object for you. You don't have to worry about object creation and those stuff. So most of the time you will see this syntax. Hardly you will say uh, string name, new string, and then Naveen. That's hardly anyone do that. So this is famous and it, even this works. You can still try this out. And that's why before when we were using string, we directly assigned the value it was working. So now I hope string makes sense. In the next video, let's try to talk about different types of strings.